my church. One of the things that uh, we need to, you know, constantly that God is bringing to us and constantly that I am sharing with you is the word of God. And I, I constantly say this to you and I'm saying this again. It's the word of God that's going to bring us into freedom. It's the word of God that's going to set us free. It's the word of God that's going to bring us into everything that is planned and purposed for us. Amen. Nothing outside, the, outside of the word of God, you will not receive what God has planned and purposed for you. Everything comes through God's word. Amen. Every prophecy that has been spoken came through God's word and it was released and things happened. Amen. Every word, I mean the word that you are reading and the, the words that you're reading in the Bible, it's prophecy. It's what God has spoken, what God has declared over our lives. And it's not about, it's been written over 2,000 years ago. It's applicable today as it was then, back then. Amen? It is powerful as today as it was as back then as well. Amen? <clears throat> the word of God is what changes us, what molds us, and what shapes us. So I trust that you uh, had read your second time that we uh, released scriptures. You all received that. I forgot to tell you last week, so I hope that you... Uh, paid attention to the messages that we've sent through. How many of you read it? Genesis chapter 6 to 11 to 10. Matthew 6 to 10. How many? Put your hands up. Let me see. My God, only two. Oh, this is sad. <clears throat> this is sad. Guys, we have to. If you ever want to really see your life become a impact a life that becomes a testimony the word of god is what's going to bring you there amen the word of god is what's going to bring you there I, I i'm standing here as a testimony what i what you're seeing before you was because of god's word and the presence of god amen and i trust that as you hear the word today that it will it will shift you it will do something inside of you to say you know what i have to make a difference I have to make a difference. And church, as we celebrate Heritage Day, heritage is, is our uniqueness. Am I right? It's our uniqueness. It is, it is our family identity that gets passed on from generation to generation. Am I right? If you look at amongst, okay, amongst Indian population, we down from India, Whatever's happened there, the Indians that grew up there, that came into our country, it passed on from generation to generation. Am I right? So heritage is a uniqueness. It is a, it is a family identity that gets passed on together with culture. And we know as we are born again, we have come into the Lord. There is only one culture and that's the Jesus culture. Amen. No other culture. It is a Jesus culture that we come into. Amen. And that has been passed on from what? Generation to generation to generation. Am I right? That's why some of us are still holding to our traditions. And, and God is saying it is the traditions of man that makes the word of God of no effect. Am I right? I think it's the book of Timothy that speaks it. It's the traditions of man that makes the word of God of no effect. So traditions is not what we hold to. It's our culture, which is the Jesus culture that we pass on from generation to generation. And that is what heritage is all about. Amen. How we have grown up, the values that God has prayed, I and mean, the values that our parents have put in us, all the things that we have grown up in the days that we've been, you know, from growing days till now. It's what we pass on to our children. Amen. Legacy is not a car or a house and, and, or, and the wealth. Legacy is who you are that you pass on to the next generation. Amen? Yes, it's good to pass on material things, but material things can be lost. You give, a, you give, a, you give your child five million, they can spend it in a week and they can squander it in a week. But when you give them God, like, like Abraham passed on to Isaac, you know, for, for all, uh, you know, Abraham had uh, concubines. He had, you know, he had uh, other women and Keturah. They had children and, and even Ishmael as well. Abraham, the Bible says that he gave gifts to, to them, but he gave all to Isaac. 
Because Isaac was the promised seed, was the promised son. He gave gifts to everyone else, but he gave all to Isaac. He gave the whole dimension of God. He passed it on to Isaac, and Isaac what? Became the father of many nations. He said that your seed shall all families be blessed. Amen? Are you catching that, church? So heritage is who you are, that what you pass on to the next generation. Amen? I attended a, this message that I put together and, I, and, and I, I, I'm standing there this morning and I'm thinking, you know, because I was going to speak about, I still want to continue on sons, all right, which I'll continue next week. But I'm standing there and, and in worship and, and I thought this message is so appropriate for Heritage Day because what we pass on to our children, what we pass on to the next generation is very, very vital. Amen? I attended a, a, uh, a meeting with the Kauteng Premier on a faith-based uh, faith uh, organizations. This is across all faiths, all uh, religions, uh, you know, everyone that was there, uh, including us, uh, Christians, pastors, uh, you know, leaders of the different faiths that were there. And some of the stats that was given to us was really, it really grieved me. I was really shocked to, to hear what is taking place in our nation that some of us don't even know and we play a deaf ear to it and a blind eye you know the premier was saying you know in the last three months there were 600 children 600 youth children youth that has committed suicide in three months three months 600 i was shocked when i heard that and then 300 since April, from April to June, 300 children were abducted and murdered. 300 were abducted and murdered. I watched that on carte blanche, um, you know, to see a mother that's bawling out with tears that says she had to pick up a child's body parts from the field. And another mother to see a baby, a child, beautiful children. I mean, they've shown us the photos, these beautiful kids that they had to pick up in a black plastic bag that has been murdered. This is what happens out there. And further to that, the Premier was saying to us, you know, they are witnessing children giving birth to children. At the age of 14 and under, are pregnant and are giving birth to babies. 14 years and under. And he said, you know, this is the stats, and this is what's happening around us. Amen, church? This is what's happening around us. And you know, one of the things, you know, with all the stats and because of them, of them uh, you know, seeing all this, that children are, are falling pregnant at a very early age and having babies at that young age, this is the reason why when, when they sat down together, you know, in parliament or wherever they discussed it, they said if this sex education and our parents are not educating their children. We have to do it. Hence, they came out with, you know what's happening, with sex education that they uh, want to bring to the children at the age of five. Yes, I agree, they're doing it in the wrong, they're going about the wrong way of doing it. But you understand the reason. On that one hand, they are saying, but it's not being given to our children. Our parents are not giving them the education that they need. And that's why we are seeing teenage pregnancies. We are seeing at the age of 14. And on the other hand, the parents are saying, no, but we'll take the, the responsibility. But it's not happening. And that's why they want to do all these things. Take away the parents' rights or the parents' responsibility of raising up the children. Amen? So sometimes when you look at it and you think, you know, why is these things happening? And, 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 and this is the reasons why that it's, that it's happening. Are you catching the church? That's why it's very important, parents, 
that we need to get down and, and find out from our children what is really going on, what's really happening, what is really going on in our nation, what is really going on in your life, what is going on in, in, in the schools, what is going on. Because, you know, <clears throat> the standards that you set, the standards that you set in your home, the environment that you create in your home will bring your children to a place where they can be open to discuss these things. Come on, am I right? Let's be honest. This morning we just, we just, ch we just chatting, okay? It's, it's what environment do we create for them that they'll be able to come and say, you know, sit you down and say, listen, this is the challenges I'm faced with. This is what I need to, this is what I want to discuss with you. Amen? The standards that we set for our children. Parents, you are a standard bearer. You are a standard bearer. You've got to set the standards for your children. You've got to be the one to set the standards that you know are going to be passed on from generation to generation. Amen? What are we exposing our children to? What are our children being exposed to in our home? What are they being taught? Amen? Come on, we've got to be real. Because, you know, we, we're sitting in a, in a, in a time now where we, are, where we see our, 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 our youth are in a, you know, I thank God that, you know, the youth that are here, that are in church. But how many youth that are lost? How many youth that are out there that, that don't know where to go, what to do? Amen? I seen that church. Is our lives the testimonies of the word that we are receiving and the word that God is releasing to us? Is that a testimony to our children to pass on to the next generation? See, these are the kind of things that we gotta, we got to look at. Everything that God is building in your life is not for you. It's to be passed on to the next generation. Come on, I'm a right church. Everything that you are receiving and God is building on the inside of you is to be passed on to the next generation. Amen? That's why whatever we are receiving, I mean even your jobs, your, your, the wealth that you are creating, who is it for? If you close your eyes today and you've gone home to be with the Lord, who does it get passed on to? So everything that we are raising up, everything that we are doing is to pass on to the next generation. To raise up the next generation. Amen? We've got to. We've got to be the ones to say, is our footsteps, the footsteps we want our children to step their foot in? We have to ask ourselves our question. Is our footsteps the footsteps that we want our children? I shared, a, I don't know how long ago, about a very prominent man. I mean, he was an attorney. An attorney that was really prominent, educated, I mean, intellect. You know attorneys. They, they're the ones that fight on our behalf. I mean, they learn it. But his one downfall was that every day that he left home in the morning, his first stop was the bar. To go to work. And every time his child, his son, wanted to run after him, he says, please get back home. Get back home. But every morning his stop was at the bar before he goes to work. Because he had an alcohol problem. He was an alcoholic. And one day, his son happened, so happened to just run out and he was gone and he never saw his son, but his son followed him. And every step that he took, his son took that step and followed him and got him right there at the bar. And he could not handle that. And he said, he said ah, I cannot. And he chased his son back home. But you know, that night he went on his knees and he cried out to the father and he said, Lord, help me that my child never ever follow my footsteps to where I've been going. Help me, Lord, that my child never follows my footsteps to where I've been going. Church, we have to understand that what we leave our children, what we pass on is what they're going to take forward. Amen? 
they're going to take forward. As we learn today and as we <clears throat> celebrating our heritage, we've got to look at it and see, you know, what am I doing that's going to live on in my children, even when I'm not here? That is something that we've got to really, really ask ourselves. So let's, let me start with this, just a few scriptures, and then I'll give you a few points of what we need to do and how. Listen, there's always a way out. This is what I love about God. Every single thing that the, uh, uh, that's, that's exper we're experiencing on the earth, every single thing, God has given us a way out. He's given us a word. He's given us direction. He's given us the dimension of heaven that we do not have to stay there. We can come out of it. Amen? So turn to the book of Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2 and verse 10. there can I read all right judges chapter 2 verse 10 it says when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers let's follow me carefully okay when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel verse 11 then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. Next verse. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among their gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. Verse 13. This is the last verse. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Hashtaroth. Church, I pray to God that we not a generation that loses the next generation. I pray to God <clears throat> that we are not responsible for losing the next generation. Amen? Not responsible for losing the next generation. We serve an amazing God, church. And God has given us a way out. God has given us patterns. He's given us. You remember I shared, I think it was about last week or the week before, I said, the reason why we are not seeing the word being come a reality in our lives because God plays patterns for our lifestyle. God plays patterns for our living. God plays patterns for us so that when we follow these patterns, we are able to, we are able to what? See and experience the results. Experience what the word of God is saying to us. That it becomes a reality for us. Amen? So as long as we, we follow that, we are able to say, God, you are the one that I will follow. You are the one, the pattern that you have laid for us. The pattern. And there's patterns for everything, church. Patterns of how to grow our children up. Patterns for marriage. Patterns for finances. Patterns for our spiritual walk. In every aspect of life, there is a pattern that God has given us. And God is saying, if you are able to follow these patterns, you'll be able to rise out and you'll be able to go forth and, and experience everything that God has placed in his word. Amen, church. God is an amazing God. Amen. He's a God that's taken you out of darkness into the marvelous light. He's a God that has brought you out from where you were to where you are now. Amen. Look at what God has done in our lives. Look at all the things that God has brought us through. Every storm, everything that we have faced. But God has brought us out of it. And he's placed us here. He's an awesome God. But we've got to follow the patterns that God has set for us. That we're able to rise and say, listen, we will see this word become a reality in our lives. Amen? Amen. You know, I, I said this at prayer meeting on, on Tuesday. I said, we've got to experience God. We've got to experience healing. We've got to experience all the things that, are, that, that, that God has spoken over our lives and God has placed in his word. We've got to be the ones to see the results and see us experiencing that. <clears throat> Amen? You know, being in that, in that faith-based meeting, I, I was hearing them saying, you know, how traditional healers, people are running to them for healing. Church, listen to me. If you are not experiencing what God is putting in his word 
and that can become a reality in your life people will run to what sangomas they will run to witchcraft it's not that god's word is not real it's us that's got to make the word become real it is us that's got to see the lives got to become a testimony our lives has got to be one that when they see they say how in the world are you managing in a time like this you know I, i'm suffering with this disease but god but there you are you've gone through the same thing and god has healed you that's a testimony church that they will run to god not to those healers not to those things that, listen it's it's something that we need to understand that god wants us to experience him he wants us to experience his word that that his word becomes so real and so alive in us that we can experience everything the word is saying amen are you catching the church we don't want to lose the next generation church we don't want to that's why i titled my message this morning a slipping generation a slipping generation see a slipping generation slipping means to slide away am i right have you ever been have any one of you slipped you tried to hold something and you slipped what happened you slid away from what you were supposed to hold on to am i right so when you talk of slipping you sliding out of place you sliding away from support you sliding away from one's group god has brought us here as a family god has put us together you have great support structure in this house you have everything that god has prepared everything that god that god put here you have you have everything at your disposal church to grow you have everything at your disposal to rise above and to become the greatest that god has created you to be you have everything in the house that god has put so that you can become a world changer and an history maker amen you are the one that is really ah, if you grab on to everything that god is releasing to us you are able to rise and go forth amen that you will never ever detach yourself from God or from the family that God has put you together. Amen. We've got to be the ones. That's why I'm teaching that we've got to be like the book of Acts. When one goes down, we are there to lift them up. Come on, am I right? <clears throat> you don't kick them further. You are there to pick them up. Amen. So let me uh, share the scripture with you in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. church please parents children that are here youth that are here please hear this word if you don't hear anything else this year this word this morning or what god is bringing to us amen it is also for for parents as well so that we know exactly how to to bring our as i said to you god has a way out for everything god has a scripture that he has given us so you there in ecclesiastes chapter 12 just one verse in uh, verse 1 it says remember also your creator in the days of your youth remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when you will say i have no delight in them this is such a powerful scripture i read it again remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near when you will say i have no delight in them how many of you still remember the days of you being 20 years old those are older ones now i mean you you think like when you were 20 you thought like hey 30 and 40 is far away am i right i mean i i can remember being 18 and I'm like now i'm 60 how quick it goes so god is saying remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and this is why in what we read in judges 
there was a generation that did not know God and God is saying in the days of your youth don't forget me because those are the years that I can do so much in your life amen because he says evil days are coming come on church when your children are growing up in your house everything is taken care of when they are in school their school fees are paid food is provided everything is provided but when they leave school and when they in university or they finish their studies life begins because now they got to earn their own money they have got to start their own life so what is God is saying never forget me in the days of your youth because when those evil days come you'll be able what to say I do not have no delight in them Oh come on church that's a powerful scripture Amen that I have no delight in them why because in your youth days you you sought to God you you let God touch you God has changed your life today church listen to me this youth this more one more that the, the people that are the ones that give their lives to the Lord more so than anyone else is our youth come on our youth the young ones why because the older ones are stubborn I mean I in my days I was so stubborn I said I'm born a Hindu I'll die in Hindu and I didn't know what God had planned for me are you catching it church but those that are young those that are in the youthful days when you share those things they gravitate to it and that's why so many of them are coming to the Lord why at the early age at the early days and this is why we have got to go out and bring them in and not only just bring them into church but we've got to train them up we've got to disciple them we've got to put everything of God on the inside of them it's no use just just saying that just confess Jesus Christ your Lord and then leaving them there we're gonna draw them in we've got to push everything that what God has placed in us that we can pass on to them amen are you catching that church I mean in the young days you know when we stand before God we're gonna answer for some decisions we made in our youthful days because there's some decisions we made sometimes we look back to think like sure did I really make this decision amen and the ones that are that are that are in the youthful days are the ones that are able to say listen I have I, I, I can go on for God that's why I just want to share this four four points with you and then we'll pray okay the reasons why God has put God does not put scripture in there for no reason there's a reason why God puts scripture in. amen there's a reason for that and the first one I want to share with you is in line with the scripture Youth are energetic. And no one said amen. Energetic, no youth here. Are you not energetic? <laughs> they are energetic. I mean, they can do things. They can just get up and go. They can, they can go till late at night. They can go out till, till early hours in the morning. They can go out. Why? Because some of us used to be in the nightclubs. <laughs> till five in the morning. So they, they have that, that energy to go out and to do things. They have the energy to what? To, to be there to do the things of God. Opposed to an old man at the age of 75. No, no, no disrespect to the old man, okay? The one in the walking stick says, uh, I want to be a doorkeeper in the house of God. And you can't even stand. Are you singing, church? The ones that are young, energetic they 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 can be the world changers you know when you put when you say to a child you know you're a world changer and a history maker I mean it gravitate they gravitate to that something happens something happens yeah I, I, I'm reminded of uh, Pastor B Pastor Tundi Bakri that every morning that he, he wakes up when he sees his children he salute he says good morning mr. president good morning mr. president that's how he addresses his children every morning. Good morning, Mr. President. 
You see, when you put something into your children that gravitates, they gravitate to, you have them for life. Come on, church. They're the ones that are energetic. They're the ones that can go out. They are creative. They are, they are the techno age. What they can do with technology, I mean, don't look at me. I, I do nothing of that. Amen? They are the techno age. They have creativity. They, they have such enthusiasm. They're creative. And God is saying, don't forget me in your youth. Because in your youthful days, I can do something to you that can set you for the rest of your life. Amen? Hey, youth, you have, God has got creative. There's, there's innovations that are inside of you. Inventions. Some things that inside of you that God has placed there that you can, you can be a multi-million or a multi-billion year. It's inside of you. But God is saying, don't forget me in the days of your youth. Amen? Don't forget me in the days of youth. The energetic church. Am I right? Do we have energetic ones here this morning? Amen. I'm energetic at 60. I'm still, I can walk around, I can, I can get up any hours of the night, I can get up any hours of the morning. I am energetic. But God is saying as youth, think of how more energy they have to do. But some of them are wasting their lives, wasting their time. And parents, we're going to be the ones to put in them and say, listen, God has raised you up for a great purpose and a plan. Amen? So you need to use the energy. And the next one, second one, secondly, sensitive. So the first reason is because they're energetic. Secondly, is because they're sensitive. Amen? They're quick to respond to changes. Come on, right? They're quick to respond to changes. They're quick to respond to what's being presented to them. That's why when you can present Christ to them and they say, listen, you have a plan and a purpose for your life. God has a great plan and purpose. You have got to be ready. I'm telling you, you'll be amazed our children will just gravitate to that. Why? Because you're putting something inside of them. They are waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting for God. They're waiting. They're hungry. They're thirsty for God. But nobody is presenting Nobody is showing them this is what God can do in your life. Amen? Are you catching the church? Those are the years that we make decisions with our careers. Am I right? Children that are here? Parents? You got to be, they make decisions at the time. What do I study? What subjects do I take? Am I right? And they're getting help from everyone of what subjects, what, what, you, have to, what you have to do in line with what you're studying. Or what you're going to become. See, these are the decisions that they make. It's a sensitive age. And parents, we have got to guide them through. That's why I'm saying the standards that you set in your house is what's going to take them and bring them to where God wants them to be. Are you catching that, church? All right, and then thirdly, teachable. Oh, man, I'm telling you. How many of you right now, what you learned in school, you don't even know. Come on. Alex, I'm right. What we learn in school, it's gone. We don't even know it. But the children now, they are, I mean, at their age, they can, they can study till the night. They can wake up early hours in the morning. I mean, I, I see my son, Joash. I mean, when he's writing, he wrote his board exams. Five o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, he's studying. I mean, they can do it. Why? Because they are at that age. And God is saying, when you are teachable, when you are teachable, you've got to be teachable. Amen? At that age, they are teachable. Are you catching that, church? They open for questions. They open for, you know, for things to be brought and for things to be presented to them. They want to hear what you have to say. They want to hear what you have to say about sex. Not that they don't know. They want to see whether you tell them the truth. Not the bees and the birds. Not you fell from a popo tree. Hello, everyone's laughing because <laughs> you know that's what you tell your children. How do we come here, mommy? Oh no, you fell from the popo tree. Okay. And now they see your stomach big, they say, like, what's inside there? 
You see the difference? But mommy, you told me we fell from the purple tree, but what's in there? Why is your stomach getting big? Tell your children the truth. They want to hear the truth. Please, parents, tell your children the truth. They want to hear it, no matter how hard it is. If you feel it difficult, bring somebody else together with you and share that. That's why the government want to push that in schools, because they feel that their parents are not discussing it with their children. Come on. We've got to be, because they are teachable. Amen? They are teachable. And, we, and this is a perfect place for them that are here, where they're coming in. I mean, some of them uh, from, from, you know, ch children's ministry, they came up right to the youth and learning the word of God and everything being pushed on the inside of them. It's so wonderful for them to be here. But parents, you've got to be the one to take the time to drop them off. Hello? Listen, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not speaking down on you, please. I'm telling you reality. You will do everything, whether it's six o'clock in the morning and the school requires your children there, you'll take them to their school. Am I right? Why is it when it comes to church, we do not do the same thing? Why do we not bring them to prayer meetings? Why do we not bring them to the, to the youth when they have that? Why do we not? And those, that's what's going to save our children. That's what's going to save them. Is that if we put all of God, like in, like in Judges, that we do not lose the next generation, that a generation that rose up, that did not know God. And if we don't push everything of God on the inside of them now, church, how are they going to face the future? That's why God in Ecclesiastes said this. He says, do not forget the creator in the days of your youth. Don't forget me, youth. They don't forget me. Because there's evil days that are coming. And I want to prepare you for those evil days. I want to prepare you for it. And then lastly, the dangers. So the first one was what? Energetic. And then what? Sensitive. Teachable. And the last one, this is the critical one. The dangers. God put this there. Because God knows the dangers of our youth and what they are exposed to. What they are seeing out there. Amen? Why church? Because of peer pressure. Come on. Peer pressure. How many of your children come home and, and, and tell you the, the certain things that, you know, I, I'm forced to do certain things, whatever. You've got to be the ones to act on it. The peer pressure for them to do the things. Amen? What the world is what? Getting our children to conform to their patterns. That's why Romans chapter 12 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because in the, God knows that the, the world is trying to conform our children. That's why LGBTQ are pushing everything at this age as early as five years old. For telling a child, you have the choice to be who you want, whether a male or a female. Why do you think they are doing it at that early age? Because when they get them at that age, they got them for life. Are you catching that church? The pressure and the, and the world, I mean everything that they're doing is to conform our children to their way of thinking and to their way of, of life. Amen? We've got to take the stand and say, no ways, that will never happen in my child's life, that will never happen in my home. Parents, you've got to stand up. You've got to be the one to say, no, my child will never go down that path. Amen? I will do everything to stop that. Amen? So these are the dangers that they are, amen, the drugs that they are, that they are uh, exposed to. I mean, our schools, SAPS has to do drug busts in our schools. And they do it spontaneously. For those that have been 
Age schools, you know, spontaneously, they will just rock up there and they start doing drugs. In our schools, church. Amen? Sex. Pressurized. By their by the friends. Okay, these are the things. These are the dangers that God. Alcohol, witchcraft. The games that they play. I mean, these are the things that they, they're experiencing. Bullying. Do you know how so much of our children today are bullied in school? Hello? I just spoke to Ari from uh, Spark Aragland. He's going to be running an a anti-bullying campaign. They've created a song and everything to go out into the streets, to go out on an anti-bullying campaign. I was, I was on a 702 new, uh, you know, the talk show. I, I listened to this. There was a 14-year-old and a mother phoned in. I said, you know, my child has been bullied through the phone, on messages, on WhatsApp, whatever, on Facebook, all these kind of things. When you see a, a message that that's, uh, doesn't sit well, act on it. Don't pass it by. Phone them and say, what's wrong? Why is this message being put on your, on your WhatsApp status? You have the guts to do that? It's needed. And this 14-year-old, with everything that she experienced, they put uh, you know, on a Facebook and everything about her. And sadly, she took her life because she couldn't handle it any longer. And a mother came on the air to tell them to warn parents and to warn others so that they don't go through the same thing. 14 years old, church. Took a life because of bullying, cyberbullying. They call it cyberbullying, right? Messages that they get. This is real stuff that is happening that our children are exposed to. Are you catching that, church? Amen? Unsupervised access to the internet, pornography, the academics, obesity is something that our children are, are faced with. Depression and social media. I was speaking about bullying. Social media. I mean, listen, if you know that a child, I mean, I, I, I'm not a Facebook fan or WhatsApp fan. I just use my phone to make calls. And to see messages. That's it. And to send messages. I don't do anything else with my phone. But those are me. I mean, you're on WhatsApp status and all these kind of things. And you see kind of things that's been put up on children's posts or whatever. Don't play a blind eye to it. Don't. I mean, if this, 14, if this mother of this 14-year-old, had she had known that, would have done something. But she could only when a child left a note did she realize what a child was going through. I hope you've seen that, church. We've got to be the ones to say, what are we passing on to our children? What is our children? What are they experiencing? What, what are they going through? What's happening out there? Amen, church? Are you catching that? You're also quiet this morning. Is it hitting home? Is it hitting home? It's a reality. And God wants to bring this to us. Okay, so that we understand what, when God put that word in there, he put it there for a reason. And I'm giving you the reasons that God has put it. So that you're able to guard, we're able to guard our children. We're able to be the ones to say, listen, I need to spend that time. Amen? Spend that time. Yeah, uh, uh, a couple of months ago I said, Let's, let's cut off everything between 7 and 8. How many of you still do it? No one. <laughs> you do it? Mildred. Okay. Anyone else? It's such a perfect opportunity, church, to put everything aside. Your businesses are run during the day. Am I right? I was in business. I ran a business that was 24-7. I used to get calls 2 o'clock in the morning because I was, a, I was a labor broker. I had staff out working all night 24-7. 
I used to get calls at 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever. But I still made the time to spend with our children. That one hour could make so much of difference in your lives. Church, how much of TV did you watch in the week? Think about it. One hour to really put everything in our children. It's not asking for too much. If you do it three days, not even every day of the week. So we're here on Tuesday for prayer meeting, okay? And the worship team is here for practice. If you do it three times in a week, it's great. Not even just every day, but three times in a week. It will be such a great thing for them. Are you seeing that, church? So understand that the reason why Everyone, the world, the government, everyone that you're seeing, LGBTQ, all of them are trying to push in early into our children. Because when they get them early, that's the strategy of the devil. That's the strategy of Satan. If I can get them early, I got them. Are you catching that, church? Please, parents. What we are st- getting our children to step into, the drugs, the alcohol. You know, I, I grew up in a home. My dad was an alcoholic throughout, almost throughout my, my years of being there at home. In my early years. I saw my dad before going to work at 6 o'clock in the morning having a drink. Almost every day, we were startled with him coming home drunk. Beating my mom up. Almost every day, my mom was beaten up. As humble as she was, as sweet as my mom was, and as small as I was, I couldn't do much because I respected my dad so much. I used to console my mother in tears because of her being beaten up almost every day with a drunk father. Thank God, in the last three years, before he passed on, he changed. And probably about two weeks or a month before he passed on, he gave his life to the Lord. And we thank God for that. But I grew up with that. And it's every, every child's dream is to follow the footsteps of the father. But unfortunately, I could not. I had to tell my mom at the age of 16, Mom, I make a promise to you. I'll never follow the footsteps of dad. And I kept that promise for many years. In my drinking years, I drank as well. Okay. Hello. Southern comfort is what I used to drink. Because it was sweet. Okay. For the years that I've drank, must have been about maximum, I would say about eight or nine years in my life. I'm 60. But when I gave my life to the Lord, that's one of the things that just went supernaturally in 1995. I was a drinker today and I woke up the next morning a non-drinker. Completely, completely delivered of it. Amen? Why? Because of my purpose. Because of my purpose and the decision I made. Are you seeing that church? I don't want to happen to you, family. You might think, oh, it'll never happen to me. Don't be fooled. It all started with one drink. It all started with one fix. One cigarette till you smoked a whole packet. One. Don't ever fool yourself and say, it'll never happen to me. It can. When the devil knows that this is what you're after, this is what you are doing, it will come after you to destroy your life and your family. This is the dangers that God has put, and He says, ah, This is one of the, these are the dangers that's there. That's why He put that scripture so that we're able to follow that. Amen, church. Are you going to take the decision this morning and say, God, the, follow, the footsteps that I leave is going to be the footsteps that you have placed in me and the footsteps of Jesus? Let's. Is our pattern. Is our pattern, church. Let's follow the footsteps 
of Jesus so that our children can follow the same footsteps as the steps we take when they put their foot in there. They know that their lives belong to Jesus. They know that their identity, that's what heritage is all about, church, is maintaining the identity of a family. That's what heritage is all about, is to maintain the identity of the family and to what? Get that culture that God has that put in us, that we can pass it on to the next generation. Don't pass on to your children that is going to destroy them. Don't ever do that. You've got to be the ones to say, God, like be like that man that went on his knees and said, God, I, I do not want my children to put their foot in the same footsteps that I've been going to. Are you going to make that decision this morning, church? I was going to pray for the youth this morning. I don't see the youth here. But we'll do that another day. And I have a special meeting. Maybe on a Sunday or another day. That we're going to lay hands on our youth. We're going to touch. We just trust God that all of heaven just gets into our children. That they can be protected. Amen? That they can be protected. I, I hope, church. You know, one of the things that I, 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 I pray and I hope to God. You carry the same burdens that I carry. Why? Together we can beat it. Together we can beat it. Amen. Why? Because the burdens I carry is the same burdens you carry. And you're going to pray for me and we're going to pray together and we say, God, we're going to destroy this. We're going to destroy this one. Okay? So let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's just make that declaration. Um, something's happening this morning. We will know just now. I don't know either, but they will. They know. Okay? So let me just pray for you. Something to do with the heritage day that the leadership or those are prepared. Uh, so let's just pray. But church, I want you to, you heard God this morning. Do you hear God this morning? We heard him loud and clear. Loud and clear, church. We heard him loud and clear. And we're going to be the ones to say, Lord, we take the decision today not to lose the next generation, Lord. But God, that the next generation will rise even stronger, even further than where we are. You know, one of the things about being sons in the house, okay, as a father, spiritual father, you know, as raising sons in the house, is sons take off from where the father. And I give you an example. You know, I'm standing on a wall that's high, okay? I cannot see beyond that wall. But I raise sons in the house that stands on my shoulder that I can show them what's beyond that wall this is what fathering is all about to place our children on our shoulders and where we have come to when we place them on our shoulders we give them such a head start they can see even greater and do even greater than what we have done amen church i pray to god that this morning that you stand and you say god let this be in my life father this morning as your children, as we stand together. We thank you, God. We heard you clearly, Lord. We heard you loud and clear this morning, Lord. And Father, I pray for every parent that is here this morning. I pray, God, that your word that has come, my God, will touch the hearts of your children, touch the hearts of your people, O oh God. Father, that supernaturally, O oh God, something will happen, my God, in their lives. Father, that this will not, this will not be, O oh God. We will not be a generation, O oh God, like in the days of Joshua, my God. When Joshua died, Lord, there rose another generation that did not know you, my God. Lord, we will not be that generation, God. God, that will raise up the next generation who does not know you father we will pass on that legacy we will pass on that legacy my God that father you what you placed in us oh God what you've downloaded in us oh God we will download oh God to our children oh God Lord help us oh God to have footsteps my God that they will follow oh God Lord as I follow your footsteps Jesus they will follow my footsteps oh God Lord I pray that in the name of Jesus come on church just raise your voice
voices and you talk to God this morning and say, God, help me, Lord. Help me, my God. God is here to help you, church. God is here to help you and God is here to help you to say, I know I cannot do it on my own, Lord. I cannot do it on my own. But God, he said, he's the one that is able to keep you from stumbling. He's the one that is able to keep you from stumbling. He's the one that is able to keep you away from drugs. He's the one that is able to keep you away from alcohol. He's the one that is able to keep you away from pornography. He's the one that is able, church, to keep you away from all the things that will destroy your life. He is the one that is able. He is the one that is able to keep you from stumbling. Oh God, Lord, I pray, Father. I pray, my God. Help us, Lord, as fathers. Help us, Lord, as mothers, oh God. Help us, my God, as children, oh God, that we'll walk in the ways, Lord, as your word, oh God, says, grow up your child in the ways of the Lord, that they will never forget it as they go into a strange land. They will never forget the sound of the Lord. And God, I thank you that we take the decision this morning as parents, Lord, that we will grow our children up in your ways, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over your families this morning, Lord, over your children this morning, my God, let it be done according to your word, my God, in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. I wish I could go on more, but I know they have something here that they plan for you. So just be seated for a moment, church. Just go with the word that God has released with us this morning. Let's produce. Come on, let's say it. I am going to produce a world changer and an instrument. Come on, shout that out. I say, my child is going to be a world changer and a history maker. My children are going to be world changers and history makers. Come on, decree and declare that this morning. My children will be world changers and history makers. My children will be influencers. My children will be what? Those that create an impact in the society. You've got to confess that. You've got to speak that over the lives of your children. Amen. God bless you, church. Yes, you give the Lord a mighty shout of praise.